I really like two things in this world. Wrestling and real estate. That's why I make this shirt and I sell this shirt. I combined them, right? Real estate and wrestling. Well, what I'm going to show you today outside of my sweet shirt is how to wrestle a $25,000 payday out of a seller. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks, the show where I work with investors like you one-on-one. -on -one. Today, I'm working with my man, Andres. Andres' brother, my New York City investor, you want to do deals, you're looking to do deals at an incredibly cheap price compared to where you're at in New York City. That's what we're here for. And today, brother, I'm going to show you how I think we could muscle out a $25,000 discount from a seller who's trying to get a premium for his property. And I think using this strategy that I've used many, many times in the past, we can get him to give $25,000 to us on this deal. And if it doesn't work, don't worry, bro. I got a backup plan as well. Let's take a look. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Let's pull up the real property so we can see how this whole thing works, right? That's what I really like to do, right? I like to combine, you know, these videos. I like to kill a couple birds with one stone, right? I like to teach theory and how we can make things work in a general sense, but I like to do it on actual deals for my actual clients like you because I see a lot of people teaching theory, but like does the theory actually work in practice or like how does it work in the real world, right? So what better way to do it than to combine those two, right? So this property, 10407 Bernard Avenue, Cleveland, 44111. It's been on the market a little over a month, 36 days. They have it listed at 130 grand. Now, as I said, I got to get you 25 grand off, okay? I want you to buy this house for 105,000. Here's the thing. This house, this house is worth 105,000 in my opinion, right? Well, what does my opinion mean? Well, who the hell am I? Well, I don't know. I've sold 200 million dollars worth of real estate like this, and I run the largest scattered site portfolio in my market, right? In Cleveland, ain't nobody got more of these duplexes than your boy Jay Wise, okay? This particular property, I have literally thousands of tenants living in properties just like this, okay? I know what I'm talking about, and it's worth 105 grand. Now, the seller wants 130, and the property, it's nice, right? We already got tenants in there, and, you know, they're taking great care of this. This is a solid rental property. This will make investors a ton of money for a very long time. But we still have to get it at the right price, right? We can't. Oh, dude, check out that. That is a sweet shower curtain. It might be worth 130 if they throw that bad boy in, right? But 105 grand. That's what we got to get this property for. And the sellers, they think it's worth 130. You're a little secret, folks. It's a little secret. Most sellers, they don't really know what the hell they're doing, right? Like, I mean, I shouldn't say, but a lot of sellers don't know what the hell they're doing, right? And they come in with this idea of what their property's worth, and then they tell Joe Blow Realtor, and Joe Blow Realtor's like, eh, your property's really not worth this, but, like, I'm just going to, like, roll with it here because I'm going to sign you up to a six-month listing, and eventually the market's going to tell you you're an idiot, uh, and you're going to have to take a lower price if you actually want to sell your property. I don't want to tell you you're an idiot right now, because if I tell you you're an idiot, you're going to kick me out of your kitchen. I'm going to be removed from sitting at your kitchen table, and you're just going to sign with the next real estate agent who doesn't tell you you're an idiot, right? So people shoot the messenger. So that's what realtors are thinking, right? And that's what owners are thinking. Owners always believe that for some reason their property is better, right? Literally doing $200 million worth of these sales. Every time I talk to a seller, almost every single time, right, they have properties like I got – so many assets exactly like this in this particular C-grade neighborhood, right? I actually have met, like probably like 10 duplexes on the street, Bernard, okay? 
I get how it goes. There ain't nobody with more Cleveland tenants than this guy, okay? But every time I talk to these people, they always have the same story, right? Oh, my tenants, they're, like, amazing. They're so much better, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's weird because having had thousands of C-grade tenants, they all, like, kind of average out to a similar experience. But every time I've ever talked to a seller, they always had these outlier tenants, right? But yet I've sold $200 million worth of real estate in this market. So how would that be possible if there's all these amazing tenants that my average experience with C-grade tenants doesn't work out that way, right? Everybody's trying to think theirs is worth more. And these sellers, right? They start believing their own hype, and that's when they think that their house is worth 130 even though every other goddamn house that's exactly like this one is going to sell for like 105 right? So they start to believe their hype, and again, they're telling that bullshit to their real estate agent, and the real estate agent, he's not going to be like, bro, you're an idiot. It's worth this. Fuck off. Like, dude, you know what I'm saying? Most people aren't going to do that, right? Because he knows that time will tell that to the seller, okay? So. With all that said, we're going to utilize some of that good stuff here, right? If this property was listed like day one, I'd say there ain't no way they're taking a $25,000 hit, right? No way. But the fact that this is overly priced, it's listed way higher than it needs to be, and it's now been on the market for 36 days. The sellers had 36 days of being on the market to realize, oh, man. Maybe I was wrong. So what we want to do, we want to submit our offer for 105 And just so you're aware, what's that going to get us? Because, again, it's a very nice rental property. That's going to get us. Now, technically, right now, one tenant is getting a $75 discount, right? He should be paying $750, $750, but one of the tenants is paying $675. I don't know. Maybe he's been in there a little while, and the owner gave him a little deal. No big deal. Focus on market rents here, right? 1500 is what this should bring in. 18 G's for the year. Normal fixed variable expense estimates, right? Again, I have a lot of these. I know what they perform. Like, we're looking at spending roughly 9 G's a year operating the sucker, leaving us roughly $9,000 a profit, okay? At the price it should sell for, 105, you put down 26 and a quarter, bank kicks in 78 and three quarters. That projects out to a 19% cash on cash return, 19.1 to be exact. Of course, these are estimates, so I guess nothing is really exact, but given my experience level, I'd say that's pretty darn accurate. Now, it all sounds good, but how do we get there, right? Well, Joe Blow seller here. Thinks his house is worth more. Thinks his tenants are special. They ain't. It's not, right? 36 days on the market. Everybody else has been telling him that, too, because he ain't sell the some bitch. If he was right, he would have sold the some bitch by now, right? Because most, most of these duplexes on the west side of Cleveland, they sell, like, within a day or two, multiple offers. Why? Because people price them appropriately. Oh, lost my pen. Let me get a new pen. Once they're priced appropriately... Okay, they're priced appropriately. There's a huge level of demand. People start fighting over it. We get multiple bidder situations. None of that, none of that is happening here. What you got here is a, a client who's probably seeing all these other properties sell, and then theirs is just sitting there. Nothing is happening. Nobody's interested. So all those like thoughts about my house is so much better, my tenants are so much better, they're really starting to dissipate. So then we come in with our $105,000 offer, Maybe they're more inclined to take it now, right? It's the first offer that came across their desk. They're probably not getting any offers because a lot of people are like, oh, 130, no way. I'm going to focus on these ones that are priced at 100, right? Those are the ones that make sense. Why would I even worry about it? Nobody's paying attention to this guy. So he's over here getting Mr. Lonely, and you'll see that sometimes after it's been on the market a little while and it's overpriced, sometimes these sellers, they really come way, way down and they take a, take a low offer like that. And maybe, you know, not even 105, maybe we get it under contract for like 110, 111, and then the seller gets kind of pot committed, then we do the inspection report. And, oh, what do you know? The roof's pretty old, Mr. Seller. You never told us about that. We're going to try to get you another five or $6,000 off, right? And we kind of work it back towards that 105, right? Strategies like that, folks, they make sense, right? Because we're taking advantage of the fact that this person came in overconfident and now the market is just beating their ass, right? And they're feeling a little bruised, right? They're retreating. And then we come in and we put our freaking foot on their throat and we make money. We get the deal that we want with no competition from other investors if it was priced appropriately in the first place, right? These are the types of strategies that can really help you guys make money as real estate investors. But we have to understand, 
Is this a numbers game? Can I guarantee that will work on this property? No, right? I can't. I can guarantee you that the seller will take 130, right? But we need to get a $25,000 discount to make the deal work, right? If the deal doesn't work, what do we do? Do we overpay? No. We move on to the next deal. It is a numbers game. We need to be out there reviewing properties, doing due diligence on properties, slinging out offer after offer after offer, using strategies that are proven to work some of the time, and it's just a numbers game. you got to put a lot more rods in the water to catch more fish. You don't necessarily catch a fish with every rod or every line, right? But you put a whole bunch of them in the water because a certain percentage of them are going to stick, are going to get you a fish, right? That's what we're doing here with real estate investing. And this is a proven strategy that I have utilized many times myself to get huge discounts, $25,000 discounts off of the list price on solid C-grade cash flowing properties like this that would do very well in your portfolio, very well if you got it at the appropriate price. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.